So, Dad, what was the hardest challenge that you've ever faced in your life? Without a doubt, the worst thing ever was in the spring of 1944, my family was sent to our unknown destination. We were locked into cattle cars. It took us three days and three nights to arrive. As soon as we got there, the men and women were separated. I was with my father, who was in his early 50s. I was 16 years old. This is from Hungary. This is the time when the Hungarian Jews were going to be sent away from home. We didn't know where we are going. And uh, we arrived, and we are standing next to each other. The order comes that we have to stand in rows of five. And we start marching to the front. I have no idea where my mother and two sisters are because they are with the women and children on the other side. And then we get to the front, there's an SS officer who just, with a flick of a finger, points to my father, tells him to go to the left, and points to me, tells me to go to the right. I have absolutely no idea what's happening. I don't know, ho I'm hoping that we'll meet up again. And we don't. That's the last time I see my father. Mm. And I don't know where I am, and I don't know what's going to happen to me. But the next day, I talk to a Polish prisoner who has been in this godforsaken place a lot longer than I was. I just arrived yesterday. And I ask him, how come my father went to one side and I went to the other side? And he tells me, come on outside with me from the barracks. And we go outside, and just matter of fact, like he's talking about the weather, He's pointing at the distance, a tall brick chimney spewing smoke and flames, and he tells me my father is going up the chimney. I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. I was with my family yesterday on the train. Now I'm by myself, and it's just unbelievable. And I realize my father is dead, and I have no idea what happens to my mother and two sisters. That's, it's... That just sounds so terrible. And if that happened to me, it would be, I would just feel so incredibly lost. Um, so, you know, I, I wrote this book about you and your sister's experiences in Auschwitz and in the other camps, um, the book We Got the Water. Um, what did it mean to you that I wrote the book? It's an absolute treasure for me. Because I know even after I'm long gone, people will be reading this book because I feel it's one of the best books ever written about the Holocaust. And it's just part of history. I want future generations to know what happened to me. It's very important. I keep speaking to audiences all over the world because I think that we should never forget this horror because I was a Jew, I was singled out to be killed. Fortunately, I survived. And I decided that I want to speak about this as long as I can. That's great. And so many people have heard you speak about it. And I can see when you speak to schools and things like that, that the kids that see you, they're never going to ever forget you. It's completely different from just reading about it, but to actually see a Definitely. survivor. I'm really happy about that. Yeah. What do you think that you appreciate about life that you might not have noticed as much because you were in Auschwitz, because you were in concentration camps? I actually appreciate everything. Just being alive, I'm really appreciative. Having a wonderful family, having a good life. I, after I survived this horror, after being in a sort of camps for a year, I decided that this is not going to ruin my life. Mm -hmm. I want to get as much out of life as possible. And I've been trying to do that all along. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I keep doing this as long as I can. For years and years to come. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the biggest lesson that you've learned in your life that you'd like to pass on to future generations? Most likely never give up. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't have to be a, concert, a Nazi concentration camp. In, it can be any kind of a real difficult challenges in your life, whether it's illness or loss of somebody in the family or whatever, not to give up. Giving up is really, really easy. 
to keep continuing to keep living is very, very difficult, especially in a tough situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when I was growing up that you, you always used to talk about the strategy that you used in the camp, which is to just take one day at a time, that you had this goal when you woke up in the morning that you were going to get back to um, where you were sleeping at the end of the day. And when you went to sleep, that you were gonna be sure that you woke up in the morning, that you just broke it down. And, and you always gave me that advice that when things are really tough, just break it down into smaller pieces and just think about one day at a time. It, it's actually easier to handle. And in a camp, there's no long-term planning. You never knew when your number is up. Let's put yeah. it that way. And, uh, you know, surviving each day at a time was the most important thing. Everything else was secondary. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good advice. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you um, always being so open about your story and, you know, for all the times for the book that I had to call you up on a Saturday afternoon and ask you to remember things that were, you know, not very happy to remember, but you were always, you know, willing to, to do that and talk to me. So I really appreciate it and I love yeah. you. Love you too, and I think it's a fantastic book. I'm so glad that you wrote it instead of me, because I would be still writing. <laughs>